Yo, yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to The Product Designer. It's Jimmy, and I can't believe we are at part five. But this is actually part five of how to Photoshop like an industrial designer. So if you guys definitely haven't seen the first couple videos yet, definitely go watch those before you watch this one. But pretty much I am now going through the process of rendering this... Uh, Tesla sketch that I did it's the Tesla semi truck and literally what I'm actually doing is not that magical <laughs> you know everybody like sees all these really cool renderings on Behance and stuff like that and they're like dang that's so freaking cool but if you actually just sat through and watched what that person did it literally just looks like this a bunch of clicking and all that jazz and honestly i don't know if i want this to go for for part six or whatever but i don't think i could finish it tonight for you guys so what i'm gonna do is try my best and i will probably just wrap it up on my own time but at this point, I feel like most of you guys got the gist of what I'm doing. If you don't, then just kind of carefully watch what I'm doing. I'll just break it down for you guys. Essentially, I am just creating shapes using the pen tool. And then once I have my shape, I will right click and do make selection. And then what that does, it, it will turn my uh, thing that I did into marching ants. And then I usually use the marching ants in order to make that shape. So I'll just fill it in with the solid color. And then once I do that, shift command I. It's hard to talk and do it at the same time. Uh, so I just removed all the excess. And so once I do that, um, essentially, I start doing this clipping mask thing. So I pretty much, you saw what I did it. I pretty much did that right here. I will do a new layer, right click, create clip, oops, missed it, create clipping mask. And then I will just paint within that layer. And the cool thing is that it'll only show up It'll only show up in that shape that's it's connected to right underneath. So this shape that I drew, that shape. So what I'm doing is I'm literally just creating a clipping mask and it'll only show up within that shape. You could also kind of do the same thing if you click this uh, transparency checkerboard kind of thing right up here. And it does the same thing, but then the issue with that one is that you paint on the same layer, but... Uh, you can't make new layers if you want to kind of do the whole layering style type of thing. And I'm really big into that. Sometimes I'll add highlights like right now. So I added the shadow. Maybe I'll add a little more. But then I usually go back and I'll hit it with like, you know, a highlight of some sort. So boom, right there. And then I'll change this here to black. Or else right now it has like red tint to it. You guys, some of you guys that are a little slow are probably like, why is that red, Jimmy? It doesn't really matter what color it is. I'm just going to eventually shade it in. I just haven't got there yet. But I make it a different color just so that I'm not making all the shapes black and then it'll be hard to differentiate them. You know what I mean? I'm, this is literally what I'm doing. So I'll look at it and be like, okay, what does it need? Just ask myself that. So I will be like, boom. Right click, create clipping mask. Okay, so usually if uh, I, right, I right clicked it when I made it black by using the color overlay under layer styles, how you get there is just by double clicking the layer. Um, you, you can pretty much just change what color that layer is by just doing that. But then what that does is it'll add this FX of uh, FX logo right here on that layer. So if you don't want that setting saved, what you can do is right click and raster layer and then 
eventually what that does is it pretty much just breaks it into a just a normal pixelated layer instead of having an effects applied to it and then you could adjust the settings later but that's pretty much what it is okay so that's what when i do that it reveals my clipping mask that i did that i couldn't see earlier so i'll do that highlight but then since i made a shadow up here i'll probably continue it in this mirror here so boom just like that do something like this too just to change it up lower the opacity right click create clipping mask i'll just do something like that okay and then i'll do this like file i won't add noise to this one because noise usually makes things look matte but i want this window here to look glossy so I'll not, i won't add noise to it i don't like how sharp it looks right at the edge it just looks a little too fake what you want is like adding a little blur might seem counterintuitive because you want everything sharp you know usually things don't look so freaking sharp like that so I'll just go to that layer, go to blur, just blur this stuff. And you guys, if you guys are like, dude, Jim, you're going way too fast with all these techniques. If you, that means you haven't watched the cup first couple videos, that's where I really go into breaking down all of this techniques, all this clipping mask stuff, all of this shading and shadow and whatnot in those videos. So, uh, master the techniques, go like do it along with me, you know? Kind of like homework in a bit, in a way, but fun homework. And then that's why when you're in one of these videos, these are one of the more advanced classes. So if you're at this point already, you guys are advanced, dude. Heck yeah, you guys are getting the A's in the class. So what I'll do is I will go back to my window layer. I hold command, click the thumbnail, and it'll create that marching ants around for me. And then I'll probably go all the way up to the top, create a new layer to work with. Do edit stroke. Okay, let's do three. Just kind of take take your time, you know? Like, that's really the biggest thing <clears throat> between a decent designer and one that's really proficient in, you know, how clean they are is that the person that's kind of clean, that really has some tight drawings, some tight renderings, you know, everything looks really crispy is that they just take their time and if it doesn't look good they'll kind of just re go back and redo it that's really all it is and the person that actually does a good job like anybody that you know that's in your class that does a good job like that's probably not the first time they nailed it you know they probably did it one time they did that rendering and it didn't look quite right and so they tried it again they tried it again and you know and they really thought about what they were doing and so that's how they're that good like that's really all it is it's not it's no like magic trick or anything like that i would do a do a rendering and it would be really early uh where i don't have to turn it in like you know the next day i, f I finished my projects really quick and and so uh i would just redo it and then i always n notice though that Every time I redid my renderings, it would always look better than the first time I did it. So if you guys can just like go back, you know, and like even if you did something once and maybe you have some time on your hands, go back and just do it again. And and since you've learned so much the first time doing it, like you're going to be able to do it so much better and so much quicker at the same time. Everybody says, you know, oh, I'm not that good with SolidWorks or oh, I'm not that good with Photoshop. Like... That's really just them saying, I don't see a real reason why I should learn it or I'm too lazy to learn it. You know, like if it's something like those type of skills, like having freaking CAD skills, having freaking sketching skills, if you if you know that's a skill you need to learn, like you should just freaking take your time and go and learn it, you know, like really just start practicing it every day like maybe you guys are watching what i'm doing and, and probably thinking like oh my god jimmy I can't believe you do it that way that's so inefficient and it probably is like i literally nobody taught me how to uh, photoshop these types of things it's kind of just me learning how to use photoshop on my own i did like a little hobby on the side before and uh that kind of taught me how to use photoshop before i was studying industrial design but then but then I would always see people like posting all these car renderings, you know, like on Simcom. You guys ever go on Simcom? If you guys are into cars, go on Simcom. 
I think it's like simcom. I don't think it's dot com. Just search, just search simcom s i m k o m on uh, Google, and then it's pretty much just a bunch of people's renderings, and it's super cool. Like it's car based, and so <clears throat> I always wanted to create stuff like that, but I didn't know how. I was like, I know how to use Photoshop, but I don't quite know how to render how they render. You know, like a person that knows how to use Photoshop in a more graphics design way doesn't exactly know how to use it in a you know industrial design rendering type of way, and so. Uh, it's something that I had to figure out on my own. That's the point I want to make. And so, if you guys see my freaking, you know, technique, and you're like, Jimmy, you know, you could do it a different way or or another way. Like, totally, let me know down in the comments because this is just kind of how I figured it out by kind of watching people's fast forwarded videos and you know, slowing it down and seeing what they're doing and 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 then knowing what i can do you know a lot of it is just adapting like you don't have to know how to do it the proper way or the correct way but as long as you just go ahead and do it you know and you do it the way you know how to do it and you understand your process you're gonna get so much further all right guys but i mean this is really what i do like i don't know how much more i should really go until I just finish it off for you guys. If you guys actually want to see me continue this. But uh, that's essentially what it is. I mean, look at that. That pretty much looks pretty close to done. If I spend another like two hours on this bad boy. You, you got to use your mind, you know. You, you guys see the very basic skills that I'm doing. You know, I'm doing the shading, the shapes and stuff like that. And then just use that. Be like, okay, now that I know how to do that. Now that I know how to, exactly what to do in Photoshop. How can I expand on this? What can I do with this? You know, like like that's the type of stuff you guys should think about. And then um, because because if the, the little that you can work with and the little skill, the little like techniques that you can get and then they can go a long way if you put your mind to it. Now that you can create renderings like this, because I pretty much taught you in these past five videos, you know, just go ahead and do the same thing. Like when you're about to submit for a portfolio, when you're about to, you know, turn in a couple of sketches for your first homework or something like that, like go ahead and just throw them in Photoshop and render them real quick. You don't have to be this detailed, you know, you could literally just do it in a quicker manner. So uh, that's about it, guys. If you enjoyed something like this, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also, leave a comment down below if there's any other thing you'd like me to talk about. I think I'm pretty much done with this series and we'll move on to a different one. Hope you guys really enjoyed these videos. If you did, definitely subscribe if you appreciate what I am doing. And uh, that's about it, guys. This is Jimmy and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.